I think the architect was really crazy that built this building. I just love big industrial spaces like this. Obviously, the wrong move will take you over the edge. It's kind of funny in a space this big that we take such extreme close-ups. Going seven floors up always freaks me out. But if you want the shot, you take those risks. Today we're heading to Central Thermique, which is a uh, thermal generating plant in a town called Esch in Luxembourg. I understand that this town was a major steel producing area, and Central Thermique took the waste gases from a nearby blast furnace to power the turbines and generate electricity. Mm, so it's not coal? No, they're recycling. Interesting. Don't they have a contact there? I've got a friend in uh, Luxembourg, Jean-Claude, and uh, I'll give him a call and maybe he can uh, help us out, meet up with us and join us for a little uh, exploration. I think we're going to probably need his help because it is right next door to an active steel mill. Security may be tight and I think today being a Sunday is probably our best day to get in. What is access like? Do we have to hop fences or do we know how to get in at all? No, no, I have no idea. Um, I only have a general indication of where this place even is and uh, we'll just sort of find it and figure out when we get there. We just have to find it getting in? Meeting up with other explorers in different countries is always an eye-opener because they have different ways of shooting or they, it's, you know, they have an intimate way of going into a building, they know it. It's always good to shoot with other people because you can see how they shoot and what they're interested in. We are supposed to meet our local contact, Jean-Claude. But I don't see the map of where we're meeting him. So apparently, this morning when we were planning what we were going to do today, we had all of our research out on the table, and then we left it all behind at the hotel when we left to come here. So uh, we're sort of having to improvise. Bonjour, Jean-Claude. We know that we're in the town. I see uh, Batin Dirty Dance. I see. Uh, <laughs> you know exactly where we are, okay. <laughs> and I think this might be him. Bonjour. Hi. Sean. How are you? You're Jean-Claude? Yes. Nice to meet you. It's great hooking up with other explorers uh, and other photographers. We're all a global collaborative community and we show each other locations. And you know, you learn things from different explorers and photographers as well. Great, let's go. Thank you. It's enormous. It's excellent. I love it. It's very big. To get in, we have to go by uh, a shaft. Okay. We can make a little chain inside, so to pass material. People ask why I take pictures of abandoned buildings and. Part of it is the adventure of going into these places and, you know, going to places you're not supposed to go. Part of it is, uh, you know, seeing the history and time going past. And part of it is you're in a space that was, you know, remarkably important to a lot of people during the lifetime of it. Now it's just sitting there ruined and abandoned, and I think that's an important thing to capture. Here comes the camera. It's on. Is this my glove? Thank you. Don't cover the lens. It's on. It's on. Is there, is the, is there light in the tunnel for flashlight? I can't even see the lens. 
Uh, it's very difficult to get in. That's one big advantage of the building because if it's too easy to get in, you have graffiti sprayed on the wall, but then they sealed all the doors and they sealed all the windows on the lower floor. And so you cannot get inside very easy. You have to take a special way. Okay, so we have a small building here, that's the offices. Uh, here is a medium building. We have big generators on top. After you. <laughs> I will go through this medium building and then to the large building and we get up to the roof. Urban exploring, I'm doing this for about three years now. Uh, everything started because I'm I'm from Luxembourg, I'm from this region, and so uh, it's in my culture, all these things with the iron ore industry and everything, and the iron ore mines. I remember when I was young, I could hear the monsters of the industry, that uh, really you could hear the sound sometimes when of the, of the factories. And now you don't see, hear these things anymore. And with this uh, thing, I discovered urbex because uh, I really loved all this decay inside these buildings. This platform was recently destroyed. Unfortunately, there are a lot of gypsies that come here to take the copper, so a lot of things are not as they were before. Generally, uh, industrial buildings speaks to a social aspect, right? It's telling us a social story about an area, a group of people, the economy of an area, and I think that's what I hope people see. Yeah, there's, there's beauty in all that, there's, there's an artistry in all that, but there's also a social significance in all that. While there's safety in numbers, you've got to break off and do your own thing when you're in these places. So I tend to find my own path within the building, and it's usually just wherever my feet and my eyes take me. Right now I explore primarily with four other guys, but I really enjoy the social aspect of this, going out with other people, meeting new people who share the same interest. Uh, when we're over in Europe, we're meeting up with a couple local explorers, and I think it'll be great to get their perspective on the buildings and get their first-hand experiences uh, and relationships to the spaces. It'll really enhance what we get out of it. This place is uh, really full of serenity, quiet and everything, this feeling that you have only inside in these buildings. That's a feeling that I think most of the urban explorers search in, in buildings like this. You know, I gotta admit, like, this place is just amazing. 
when I finally gain access to a building and walk in for the first time, it's quite an amazing feeling to have this place all to yourself and you know that it's yours to explore and to find art. The building is not so decayed that you risk to fall inside a hole. If you take care, it's safe in that aspect. I'll show you something about the symmetries inside the building. When you're here in the building, you will see that everything is symmetrical. The, I think the architect was really crazy that built this building. You can even put your tripod down and put it exactly in the middle of the stairs. And then if you look at the lines here, everything is symmetrical with the lines of the windows and everything. And it's amazing. It was really love for the building. I got involved in this through Jean-Claude, who I met over the internet. And we have been running around the country for several weeks already to look for abandoned places, because it's part of the history of Luxembourg. So uh, I like to be here. I guess my grandfather was here, <laughs> so it's part of it too. feeling of the places, the, the look of it, and everybody walks past them, but doesn't see them, and that's what I like about it. This makes good art because it's uh, different from stuff you see all the time. It's not as clean and neat as most things you see on the internet, where I mostly see photography. So I think it's special because of that. Just, I just love big industrial spaces like this. Uh, it's, this is a really good one. Uh, there's not a lot of graffiti in the industrial areas. Uh, most of the machinery is still intact. And you, can still, you can still see sort of how it all worked and how it all was sort of put together and uh, what functions were each machine. It's just, ah, oh, this is just the best. I love it. Wow. Uh... It's an awesome place. You always find something to shoot. There's a ton of stuff in here. I've been focusing on smaller areas, developing series of windows and pipes and things like that. So this place has a lot of all of that. There's a piping system up there that has reds and greens and blues and yellows in it, which are great. So when you see something with vivid color in, in a place like this, it just kind of begs you to shoot it. This is a coal hopper. And in another power station, there was an explorer who tragically fell in to one of these and uh, he died from his injuries a couple days later. The fall was about three stories down. Uh, it just really gives you pause and reinforces that you really have to be careful because accidents can happen anywhere. Pretty much all this area underneath us is all coal hopper. Mm -hmm. The floor seems stable but we should definitely stay off this track. Yeah, that's a long way down. I can't even light the bottom with my flashlight. You know, the prize in any power plant is finding the turbine hall, usually very grand. Uh, you know, this is uh, where all the magic happens. You can see a bit wandering across here. Mostly, the uh, danger I fear is dropping my gear. So uh, I'm putting a strap on my camera here, but obviously there's a lot bigger dangers. Uh, we'd be as careful as we can in these places, but uh, 
just like anything else in life, you could die crossing the street if you're not careful. So we take precautions. We look where we're going. And if it's important enough for me to get the shot, I will take a slight risk. You know, everything in this plant is charged toward making these things generate the electricity for this entire area, or they did at one point. really corny to say but the building has to speak to me I have to kind of be able to create a story in it and if I don't get that then it kind of shows in the imagery I take My photography of abandoned buildings started uh, mainly as a record of, of showing people where I'd been. I, I never really started doing it as a way to get photographs. I, I did it because I just like to go into the buildings, I like to see what was in there. And bringing photos back was always a much easier way to describe to people what I had seen. And I mean, how do you describe some of the things that are in these buildings? You can't. I mean, but if you show them a picture, they instantly understand what it is you've seen. It's kind of funny in a space this big that we take, you know, such extreme close-ups. It's amazing when five different people go into the same space and then bring back five completely different sets of pictures. And, and you, you'll look then at, at what they did and you think, I didn't even see that. I mean, but, you know, that's a great shot. I mean, what room was that? What machinery was that? And so the next time you go out, now, you're thinking about what you've seen and what you maybe you didn't do. And so, I mean, there is no real style, per se. I mean, it, it does change and evolve. It's hard to say what makes one good shot, but all those shots have a story in there somewhere. The grading of the floors always freaks me out, going seven floors up and you can still see right down. And with the precarious grading, I, I'm, I don't fare too well at it. But, you know, if you want the shot, you take those risks. I just love these types of shots. Looking at these odd angles. In another power station, I have a shot looking straight up. Uh, and uh, you can just see through all the floors and all the gratings. You can see the pipes and the different layers and the levels. It's almost like a layer cake. You can see all the different floors, all the different pipes. Um, it just makes a really interesting composition, almost like an M.C. Escher sketch. It's, it's just really interesting.
When it comes to industrial sites, I'm very impressed with the effort that went into the design of the place and the construction. For me, exploring started when I was about maybe 10 years old. My dad would take me into construction sites and see the progress in the buildings, and eventually I had to see buildings at the end of their life, so it seemed like this was a natural progression. Rooms like this are difficult to shoot. They're just so big. The machinery in them is so massive that it's hard to capture it all. It's also difficult with these open windows. It blows out a lot of shots, you get a lot of overexposures. So you have to start looking for details and patterns. I take photographs like this because I want to convey to others what I see and show them what they would probably never see. Also, while, say, an archaeologist might like to bring back artifacts to convey a history, I like to bring back uh, images, which I find uh, does the job just as well and sometimes has a more powerful impact on people. So this one is the last steps we have to go and then we're on the roof and we will have a wonderful view. Is this all of Luxembourg? <laughs> uh, one big part. <laughs> this is uh, pretty cool. Yeah, the view up here is definitely a nice surprise. There's a few power plants you can get on the roof of. Uh, there's one in Philadelphia. Uh, the only problem is it's, it's a little bit sketchy. Uh, most of it's not there, and what is there is, is uh, barely there. So uh, it's nice to be up here. This is a much more solid and stable roof, and I think the view is definitely a lot better. The furnace gas that uh, came to here came from this blast furnace from the Schifflange and it came also from this one that's Belval. And you can see all this pipe that goes all the way. They ran all the way through town? Yes. Power plants are some of my favorite sites to explore, so this is rather ideal for me. Nice industrial setting. And steel mills on either side. Absolutely magnificent. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot.